we have new information revealed from Korokoro and a trailer on August 12th. Pokemon! 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 Hello everyone, I'm Dustin Bizzle, and welcome to another Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon video. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about the things that were revealed in Koro Koro and August 12th. Considering that a lot of information was revealed on the August 12th video, the only thing we're going to talk about in regards to Koro Koro is the three Pokemon that were not also revealed in the English trailer on August 12th. So of course what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the Pokemon, then something, and then of course the Alolan forms that we've got, and then of course we'll, we'll talk about Koro Koro reveal. So I apologize if this video isn't organized as properly, like, you know, with all the new Pokemon revealed and then stuff or whatever, but I kind of like would like to do it in the order that the trailer shows uh, in the August 12th, and as well as then talking about Korra Korra. So, of course, let's move on. So, of course, let's talk about Wishy Washy, which, of course, is this, like, little sardine Pokemon that you see over here and everything. And, it, and, it ha and it's a water type, of course, and it has the ability schooling. Now, the interesting thing about this Pokemon is that it apparently doesn't have an evolution, I can't say for certain, but it has a, an ability that makes it seem like it doesn't have an evolution, and of course, that's the ability schooling. When when Wishy Washy reaches a certain level, it becomes this really cool, awesome school form, which of course is here, and of course, that's um, that's it's a new form that it takes when it reaches a certain form. Now, when I first saw this, I was a little disappointed because I was like, that that would be a believable evolution. I wouldn't ha have a problem with Wishy Washy evolving into that big, better fish creature thing or whatever. But I guess they really want to do something creative and unique, and that's not thing wrong with that. But uh, I guess they just want to go with the the school form or a school of fish concept in regards to a Pokemon, which again is creative and unique. But you know, I I just prefer evolutions rather than a form that allows the Pokemon to get stronger than its base form. Kind of like how Zygarde is just your regular 600 base stat total in its 50% form, legendary or whatever. Just your 600, same as Garchomp and all those Pokemon, so, so yeah, but then when it becomes complete, it'll presumably get a lot stronger, so, yeah, that's a little disappointing, but it's, you know, whatever, so, so that's pretty much it, I have to talk about that, uh, like I said, the concept is pretty unique or whatever, but I would have preferred evolutions. When it comes to temporary form changes... Uh, improving the ability of a Pokemon, I'm always going to prefer evolutions. I would prefer an evolution to Mawile over a Mega Evolution. You know, anything that's temporary, I don't really like. So, yeah, outside of that, it's whatever. So then, of course, we run into this, uh, I guess people are calling it the Sea Cucumber Pokemon, I guess. I don't know if that's what its description says. Maybe it is Sea Cucumber or Cucumber Pokemon. Hold on. Uh, yep, it is the Sea Cucumber Pokemon. Okay. Uh, I was a little doubting whether or not it was a Sea Cucumber. Not that uh, I would have a problem with Creative Liberties. It's just that it kind of looks more like a rock with spikes on it. But I, I guess a Sea Cucumber could look like that, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, of course, let uh, like I was trying to say, let's talk about Pukukumo. Or that was wrong completely. Pukumuku, or whatever, so I'm, I'm sorry if I pronounce it incorrectly, but um, I, I do kind of like how the beginning of its name is like Puke, you know, like it vomits, and it, and it goes along with uh, what it actually is. Oh, by the way, I'm sure these Pokemon have descriptions on Pokemon.com, but I didn't write those in my notes or whatever. Uh, so I apologize if I'm missing things out or whatever. So, yeah, Puke. Kumuku is a 
See cucumber, it looks like a stone with the markings on it that has like pink eyes, pink spikes, and it looks like it has a bunny tail or a, I don't know what you want to call that, but it looks like a tail on the back of it or whatever. So yeah, it looks pretty interesting. It's a water type, of course. And of course it can uh, use the in inside of its body and attack. What we saw in the trailer is we saw a hand coming out of its mouth, like when it was like fainted or whatever. But it but its ability innards, innards out is basically like that drift limb ability, like aftermath or whatever. Uh, it it uh, takes out it d deals damage to the opponent, and according to according to Bulbapedia here. It innards out is an ability when the Pokemon with this ability faint, it deals damage to its opponent equal to the amount of HP it had before it last being hit. So if it had like 100 HP left, it would deal 100 damage. I can see that being useful in some circumstantial cases. Or So yeah, that, that is interesting, and, and I do kind of... Uh, like it that uh it has this that it has this ability to take its innards out and like use it like as a fist and stuff so yeah really interesting concept of a pokemon so then of course we run into morlul which is the grass fairy <laughs> grass fairy oh you're so funny game freak <laughs> uh, because it's like not any other pokemon to be a grass fairy pokemon now morlul is definitely interesting because this it is a weird mushroom looking pokemon thing and uh so yeah it so it is pretty interesting looking i it it looks better when it's like flipped upside down, you know, and it's, uh, like, its legs or whatever, it's, like, the top of its head or whatever, you know, it kind of looks kind of cute or whatever, so, yeah, it's pretty cool, I guess, and it's based off of bioluminescent mushrooms, so that's interesting, and it possesses the ability illuminate and affect spore, I kind of, I kind of want to know what the Pokemon.com says about them, but I guess I'll save that for later. So that's all of the new Pokemon revealed in the trailer uh, because the other stuff is something else as well as Alolan form. So, of course, let's talk about the new thing that was revealed. And, of course, that is the evil team that's being introduced into 7th generation, of course, and that is Team Skull. And... And Team School sounds like a really cool evil team, and I like the name. I'm just not too crazy on their designs. Well, at least the grunts, pretty much. I, I just don't like the clothes that they're wearing, pretty much. But the character designs are a little bit more interesting. Well, outside of the grunts, of course. But they, of course, are going to have a generic appearance. So, But I do like the aspect of a thug-slash-pirate aspect of Team School, which is kind of interesting. Uh, they're supposed to be pirates. It seems like Team Skull are supposed to be like pirates or whatever. But when you watch the trailer, it seems like they're just like more thugs that you see like on out on the city or whatever. You know, like they wear like clothes that that are like below their waist or whatever, like kind of like wrapped or, like baggy pants like around their knees, like throwing up p uh, peace signs or whatever everywhere, and just acting all cool. So yeah, it. It is interesting. So anyway, so of course we're going to talk about the two main uh, characters within Team Skull, and that is of course Plumeria, which is my favorite of Team Skull so far, at least design-wise, and, and I don't know if I'm going to like her as a character, but definitely design-wise, I really like Plumeria's design. It's all, it's, it's a, uh, it's seemingly a, like, colorful, that's the best way I can describe Plumeria, is that she's pretty colorful. Because she has like that pink and yellow hair, so yeah, that's that's kind of gives it gives her more vibrant appearance rather than everything everyone else. So of course, then of course there's Guzma, which I don't really like as much, but he he's still pretty okay. He he, he does seem like he'd be the leader of Team Skull at least Plumeria anyway, and. What I say here in my notes is that he looks the least intimidating. Now, there is something that people will probably address, be like, 
What? No, come on, that doesn't make any sense. But actually, let me explain. Of all the gym leaders we've had, Giovanni, Archie, Maxi, Cyrus, Gidus, Lysander, all of them come off as more evil. And speaking of which, when, when are we going to get like a, a, a female being the leader of an evil organization? I mean, we've had champions. Why can't we have like a female who's the evil t leader of an evil team? I mean, how come we haven't had that yet? That would be awesome. You know, like have like a, a like an Olympia design or something like that of like an evil queen like person that would definitely be interesting. I'm surprised we haven't had one yet. It's always been males for whatever reason. I guess I guess Game Freak is saying men are more evil than women. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how anyone is going to take that comment. You could be offended if you're a woman, but then I don't know why you'd want to be considered evil, so I, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, there is one part in the trailer that makes it seem like, well, Dustin, did you forget about this scene or whatever? And to be fair, when I initially wrote that, I did forget about this scene in the trailer, but then I thought about it, and I'm like, no, that still doesn't make him intimidating. It makes him crazy, and you probably wouldn't want to round him, but it doesn't make him look intimidating. It just kind of makes you, you want to just be like, okay, uh, uh, nope, okay, bye. But the other ones, the other leaders, they can, like, glare at you, and it's like that they can make you cower into a little ball. Guzma, you just, just want to walk into a room, see Guzma doing whatever he was doing in the trailer, and then just immediately walk back and be like, nope, <laughs> And the reason why I say that is because Guma does this crazy laughing thing in the trailer. And it does look like it, it is creepy and it is a little unnerving or whatever. But when I see it, I kind of get this uh, like low quality horror movie of a skeleton, you know, just like laughing or whatever. And it kind of does look like that. It kind of looks like a skull. An actual skull, you know, laughing, you know, like the <laughs> kind of sort of thing that Guzma is doing, and it and it kind of looks comical. I mean, I, I mean, it's not something that you want to see in person, but it kind of has this comical effect to it. So it's kind of not intimidating. It's just a big nope, not nope, uh, -uh nope, other way, <laughs> you know. So that's why I. That's why it's not a as intimidating as anything else so so but there is one last thing I want to note before I move on and of course that's the dialogue within the games and it says and Guzma says to Kukui they are fellow rejects who never became captains now based on what we know of information I'm assuming Guzma refers to trial captains and it seems that if you don't succeed in your trial island trial challenge, at least defeating the last Kahuna, you will not become a trial captain. So it seems like you can fail at, at doing the island trial challenge because if you do complete it, you automatically become a trial captain. Or maybe, or maybe they just didn't qualify properly to become a trial captain and that's something that Kukui and Guzma wanted to be but then Kukui decided to be a professor maybe because he wasn't good at battling and Guzma may have just been emotionally unstable to become a trial captain who knows it, it's it's starting to look like Guzma is kind of like un misunderstood you know it's like he wanted to be something and he got his dreams crushed horribly and no matter how much he tried he kept being belittled and he just became evil and snapped and crazy as a result of that I, I don't know it's hard to say what exactly happened or whatever but I, I do think it seems to indicate that you might be able to fail the island trial challenge uh, obviously the player character won't be able to won't fail the island trial challenge because it's the story mode but it does seem like there is some aspects of failure that leads to other opportunities but it seems like Kukui is like the better Guzma uh, because he actually did something with his life while Guzma just apparently went insane and crazy or whatever so that's just something that I wanted to note so maybe that 
hints towards my speculation in regards to the trial captains having completed the island trial challenge or whatever. Now, I suppose it could just be captain of a ship. Maybe they were seafaring people who wanted to be captains or whatever, and they just failed the captain test. But kind of awkward to suggest a entirely an entirely different captain and then also shove in trial captains. It really would be awkward if that was the case. It's possible, just really wouldn't make any sense because it, it, it just... It's weird. I mean, we've had captains before for other things or whatever, but if you're going to introduce a concept as a, a island or trial captains, then it wouldn't make any sense to have any other type of captains outside of, you know, the ships that fit, that take you to one place or whatever. That would at least make sense. But, you know, having a whole storyline about Guzma and Kukui wanting to be ship captains over trial captains is kind of an awkward storyline to have. So it's I, it's whatever. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what it is later on. So then, of course, let's move on to the Alola forms before I be talk about the three other new Pokemon that were revealed recently. Or at least within the past week and a half or whatever. So anyway, first off, we run into Alolan Meowth, which of course is like this blackish, purplish Meowth. I mean, it kind of looks black, but I can see the argument of it being purple. It, it's kind of hard to call something black when it is so light and coloring. It's not like pure black or whatever. So yeah, it, I guess it could be just a faint shade of black or whatever, but I can see the argument of being like purple or gray or well, more gray than purple, but you know, you know, you know what I mean. So, yeah, it, it looks a little bit more sassy, more, more spoiled, or whatever it is. And of course, it is a dark type. If I hadn't already said, then it has pickup and technician as an ability. And if I remember correctly, it was created through selective breeding and like being spoiled, and it became a dark type. I don't know if that makes any sense. And it seems like, uh, given that with the other Alolan Pokemon that when I made my speculation of what Pokemon's type could be, I guess it seems like it, they're kind of indicating that it is possible for a Pokemon to become a completely different type of any of the 18 types out there. So I, I'm glad that I'm getting a little bit more relief here that anything can become anything. So a Flygon could become a, an electric dragon type under the right circumstances. The, the reason why I say this is because of the what I speculated and I did make a note because it was revealed before I could edit the video and put it up but of course that's in regards to Alolan Marowak. It was actually confirmed in Korokoro Koro that Marowak does have an Alolan form and as I said it was seemingly implied by Kiwi Kiwe, the fire type trial captain or whatever. And of course, what we got here is a really cool Pokemon. Oh, by the way, for Meowth, I I don't care one way or the other, but I do think it is a waste of an Alolan form that could have been used for something better. But I can understand why Meowth would get an Alolan form. So anyway, Marowak it is really a nice Pokemon. It looks awesome. It's really cool. And it has Curse Body and Lightning Rod, which I think it had Lightning Rod before, but because of its new Alolan form is why it has Curse Body, and that's because it has Fire Ghost. And Fire Ghost is an amazing typing. We've only had it with Litwick and stuff, but it was it's interesting for a Marowak to become a Fire Ghost. Or see, see, we kind of speculated that it was going to be a Fire type because of Kiwi having a Marowak, so of course a Fire type would be interesting and you know it kind of would have made sense that you know some Pokemon would have become ice types because they went to the mountains or whatever but maybe Pokemon staying within a hot temperature would have eventually became a fire type if it wasn't already a fire type. Now the most interesting part about this though is that it's also a ghost type which is I think as cool as a callback to when Marowak was a ghost in the first generation when Team Rocket killed Cubone's mother, Marowak. Now, the interesting thing about this is that I know I'm going to probably bring this up a lot, but I've always thought it would be cool to have Marowak actually evolve into a ground ghost Pokemon and it would be a Pokemon that couldn't use thick clubs, so it could have a really nice attack stat. 
I know Thick Club like doubles the attack stat, but you know it would have that, and it would be like this cool skeleton-looking creature that would also be part ghost and ground. And I thought it was an interesting evolution concept. So it's really nice that they're giving a ghost typing to the Marowak line. I don't know if this means we're gonna get a fire ghost Cubone, or but it could just be Marowak. But anyway. From what it was said, Marowak became a fire ghost to avoid its predators. Now, the ghost typing really wouldn't really matter because there's no ground type weakness that is covered by the ghost typing, so that's a little unfortunate. But the fire typing, it might have been attacked by ice types or grass types, which would make sense, so it became a fire type to do that. Or maybe it just became a fire type just so it could be more neutral against whatever predators were trying to eat it, basically. Marowak being a prey doesn't really make all that much sense, given that it has a bone that can whack you. And, and the only Pokemon that would be able to take the club of a Marowak, basically, is a flying type, because the it would be a ground type, so of course they'd be immune to it, but... Or even Pokemon with Levitate, but otherwise it's whatever. But yeah, like I said, Marowak is a really cool Pokemon. And uh, it's one of the fears that I have, and although I did mention this in the forums or YouTube comment sections, or and people are like, well, there's a lot of these other types or whatever, but they, they didn't seem to get my fear as much. I mean, I'm not saying there aren't going to be original fire types or original ghost types because obviously have those what i'm saying is i don't want the alolan forms to take away subtract from the number like okay so we have one fire type okay so then of course we have the these alolan forms which are also fire type and that adds up to the fire types introduced into the game so that they couldn't put more original fire types i'm not saying that there won't be a couple i'm just saying that that I would like them, I would like to think that these Alolan forms are in addition to whatever designs they come up with and not just as a replacement or being pure lazy. And a lot of people are like, these are creative, why would they be lazy? You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the time it takes to change a Pokemon's type and give it a little backstory of why it changed into a different type. That could be considered creative and unique for a Pokemon game. But just slapping a different type on a Pokemon rather than creating a brand new original Pokemon is kind of lazy. Because it's kind of easy to, like, say, Fampy, um, let's give it a electric uh, ghost typing. There we go, electric ghost typing. And it become electric ghost because it... Be because it was always weak in electric uh, power plants or whatever in Pokemon that had like an advantage, even though it was supposed to have a, uh, an advantage over those electric Pokemon, it just adapted and became a ghost electric type. <laughs> there we go! Ghost electric Fampy confirmed! No, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just saying it would, as opposed to actually creating a unique electric ghost type, you know, you just slap on a electric ghost typing and origin and design on a Pokemon. So I can understand there is some unique and creative aspect of giving a Pokemon a new type and slightly changing its design or whatever. And I do think that that does have merit or whatever. I just don't want it to be a replacement. I don't want Marowak to take away from the number of fire ghost original Pokemon that could actually have been in the case. So, like I said, I want this to be an addition thing, not a replacement thing. So, of course, let's run into the last Alolan Pokemon revealed as of now. And, of course, that is the Alolan Electric Psychic Raichu. And, of course, it has the ability Search Sur Surge Surfer, which apparently doubles its speed in electric terrain. I don't know why Electric Train is the way that it, it or not that, no, no, never mind. I kind of don't like the fact that Surge Surfer is a conditional ability that can, that can only use with, be used with Electric Terrain. I'm assuming that Raichu and Pikachu can learn Electric Terrain or whatever, but... But I still don't know if I like that as an ability. I guess it is interesting and it looks really cool. And it, I think it's cool that we have a Raichu that can surf as a callback to 
surfing Pikachu and stuff. I don't know if surfing Pikachu could evolve into a, a Raichu, so Raichu could have surf. But yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting. So, And I know this is going to be an unpopular opinion because I I know a lot of people are probably going to be like, what? But I know a lot of people who prefer things rather than what they should be. But I really think Alolan Raichu is cuter than normal Pikachu. I, I know a lot of people may not like that because Pikachu is like the ep epitome of like cute Pokemon on Pokemon or whatever and nothing can be cuter because it's the mascot of Pokemon and stuff and maybe other people but I know there are a lot of people who prefer Raichu over Pikachu. I don't know necessarily think it's just because of the stat boost or the difference in stats but I think people do like Raichu in design wise. And while I do like Raichu, Raichu does have a cool, unique design. I kind of do like Pikachu better, uh, mostly because of Ash. But if you were to put up a Lolan Raichu uh, over Pikachu, then in no way would I ever have a normal Raichu or a normal Pikachu. I would want a Lolan Raichu on my team always if I was forced to choose between that. So... Unless Pikachu gets an Alolan form or something to make up for it, it might be able to make up for it and be cuter than Raichu, but right now, nope, <laughs> Raichu is cuter. So, of course, let's finish off this particular video with, of course, the last three Pokemon that were revealed in Korokoro Koro that have not gotten the English names yet or English concepts yet right now. I, I do find it weird that these games are supposed to be worldwide releases, and yet when Korokoro Koro comes out, <clears throat> it takes a while before the some of the Pokemon revealed in Korokoro Koro are going to be revealed in English. It was the case with uh, Beware and Mimikyu. It was revealed in Korokoro, Koro, like, I don't know, like last month or the month before that, but it took a while before Mimikyu and Beware were actually revealed in English or whatever. So... I don't know if it's uh, just because it, it originates from Japan that they get some, that they should get some things before any other audiences out there, but I am a little disappointed that, I don't, I don't know, it'd be nice if the English actually revealed a, a Pokemon that wasn't revealed in Japan. Of course, obviously, we know about these Pokemon, even though we're from different countries or whatever, different nations or whatever, so... It, Ultimately, it wouldn't matter, but I don't necessarily like uh, the idea that Japan is hoarding all these Pokemon for a good while, and then maybe eventually they'll be released in English at some point, obviously. But, yeah, you know, it would be nice if it, if it was more worldwide. I mean, I don't mind Koro Koro having some precedence or some ability to ha reveal Pokemon, for the first time or whatever, but it would be nicer if, like, like a week or two weeks, it hasn't been two weeks, so I guess we'll just have to wait for a, a week or two or whatever, and maybe they'll be revealed, but I, I don't know, I, I, I'm not trying to be spoiled or acting like I'm entitled, it's just kind of strange that this is how it would work when, with a worldwide release, pretty much. So anyway, let's talk about something that was revealed, of course. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the pre-evolution that was revealed, and of course that was <coughs> whoa, that was Beware's pre-evolution that was revealed in Korokoro, Koro, and its Japanese name is Nui Koguma, I believe is how you pronounce it. I, I'm not Japanese, so I don't know how to pronounce these names, <laughs> so I apologize if I'm pronouncing it correctly. So, of course, Nui Koguma is, of course, the pre-evolution to Beware, and it, it does seem like it's pretty cute, but I'm going to need some more angles and more be and better art designs and maybe some images within the games or whatever, because in the Korokor Core image, it, the swiping image of Beware swiping air or whatever being that cute, adorable little red panda Pokemon that it could be made it look really cute, but then its official art next to it where it wasn't doing anything cute or anything, it kind of just looks like Beware all squished up with like a little tail, like a ball of Beware, or close to a ball of Beware, and it, it just didn't look right to me, and it was kind of disappointing, so it, it would be nice if it looked a little bit better, in my opinion, so I think we need to see more art of 
Nui Koguma before I can say that I like it. But it, but it is interesting that Beware does have a pre-evolution or whatever. So of course let's let's talk about the two other Pokemon that were revealed in regards to Koro Koro that have not been revealed in English yet. And of course that's the Sandcastle Pokemon, the two Sandcastle-like Pokemon. So I, I do like the concept of a Sandcastle Pokemon. There's nothing wrong with that, within my opinion. I think at this point, if you honestly have a problem completely with these Pokemon... I mean, I'm not saying you can't like the designs, because even, even me, I don't really like the designs of these Pokemon all that much. But the concepts themselves, if you entirely are against them, I think you're just being ridiculous at this point. We've had Sludge balls and magnets in the first generation at this particular point if you can't accept the concept that anything can be a pokemon even a car a steel ghost type in the future then you're just being ridiculous in my opinion you know i, I don't know if i would like a ghost car i don't know if i'd like a car pokemon but you know, it, it's something that could happen at this particular point. You know, it makes sense because we've seen all these concepts happen That at this point. It's just being narrow-minded if, if these aren't Pokemon. So even though I don't like the designs, and that's fine, you don't have to like the designs or whatever of these inanimate object Pokemon or whatever, I still don't think it makes any sense to say, oh, pff, Pokemon are running out of ideas. These aren't Pokemon or whatever. So anyway, <laughs> I, I just... Even though I'm not fond with the designs, I do like the concept of Sandcastle Pokemon. That does sound kind of cool. So, I, I, I just don't know. It's kind of eh, with me. So anyway, they're both Ghost Ground, at least according to what I read in Korra Korra. And, and, and they do seem like they're the defensive Ghost Ground Pokemon because, you know, uh, the evolution is literally a, a ghost is basically a sand castle in particular. So, of course, that's something interesting. But I still prefer the Golette line. That was one of my favorite Pokemon of fifth generation was the Golette line, and I enjoyed that line completely. So, of course, let's move on to what we have here. And, of course, we have the pre-evolution, which, of course, is pronounced... Well, not pronounced. What I think is pronounced, and I'm probably wrong, is Sunba, or Sunba, which, of course, is basically a sound mound with, like, a mouth or an eyes or whatever, and it has a shovel sticking out of its head, because that's how you create sandcastles, is with, like, pails and shovels. You use the pails to create the tower, uh, tower parts of the sandcastle, I believe, like, tipping it over... And you have like this bucket, sh upside down bucket shape that can then be formed into other things or whatever. So, yeah, th there, it's okay for the concept. Again, I don't really like the designs all that much. I don't hate their designs. I'm just not looking forward to them all that much. And I'll probably just capture them just for the sake of capturing them because I kind of do that in a lot of situations. I just capture Pokemon for the sake of capturing them. But of course it evolves into a Pokemon, I believe, called Shirodasuna, which is the more proper Sandcastle Pokemon. It, you know, it actually looks like a full-on Sandcastle Pokemon that someone put a lot of effort into making. And of course it has eyes, mouth, and a shovel. And based on the picture we got in Korra Korra, it looks like it could use some sort of quicksand ability or move that can trap opponents or Pokemon, because that's what we saw with Pikachu. So, again, I will repeat this. I do like the concept of Sandcastle Pokemon. I think that's kind of interesting. Ghost Ground is an interesting type. Not, I don't like it more than Golette, though, so, the, or Golurk. So, yeah. I mean, come on. Golette and Golurk were, were basically ancient robots basically that that's probably why i like golette and golurk so much they're like the, it, it has this cool typing and something that i would have liked a marowak evolution or marowak to have in general having a ghost ground type or whatever but having a ghost ground pokemon and also have it be like a robot especially when golurk can fly like a rocket ship or whatever basically yeah, it's, it's going to take a long time before a Ghost Ground Pokemon could beat it, especially if the only competition is a Sandcastle, <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I like ca Sandcastles. I can see how people can make Sandcastle designs and 
really cool. I'm sure there are some epic sandcastle designs. You type in Google images of really cool sandcastles, and I'm sure you'll get some amazing sandcastles. But a robot, I think, is better than a sandcastle, to be honest, as a Pokemon. So, But I still like the concept or whatever. It's interesting that they would take something like a sandcastle that became a Pokemon, like how... Trash became a Pokemon, even though Trubbish and Garbodor are ugly. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say about that, or whatever. And there's one little thing that I do want to talk about real quick. And I'm sorry, if I apologize for this long video or whatever. But anyway, and of course, that is Rockruff. In Koro Koro, it said in next month, at least I'm pretty sure next month, uh, next Koro Koro, it's going to show us something about Rockruff's evolution. I don't know if it's going to show us a hint to Rockruff's evolution and have it be a silhouette. I don't know if they're going to outright show us Rockruff's evolution and show it show it in the Korra Korra scan. I don't know entirely what's going on with Rockruff, but it seems we're getting something in relation to its evolution really soon. Now, I, I feel like this will be very important when we learn about this, I do think it's very important that we take note of this. Because whatever this will be, whatever it will have, whatever evolution, concept, or whatever it is, this very well might apply to the starters. It won't be 100% confirmed. It'll depend entirely what they reveal next month or whenever they're going to reveal this. But it might point something in relation to the starters because in the first Korra Korra when it revealed Rock Ruff it said that it and the three starters had something in common now a lot of people are speculating well maybe Rock Ruff's evolution depends on which starter you have and that's the relation I don't necessarily think that would make any sense because it would mean that Rock Ruff would have this strange connection with the starters and I don't know if that would make any sense I can't think of any reason why rock rough would become like rock fire or rock grass or rock water just depending on which starter you have it kind of seems interesting i mean i can understand I, I can see maybe that they could like like have some sort of rivalry with the pokemon so like uh so that they would like develop a type that's super effective against that type so if you have Litten, maybe Rockruff will become a rock water so it can defeat the Litten or something like that. But I still don't think it would make any sense because it would be like this very conditional connection with the starters rather than like what I would like and hope is that Rockruff's evolution depends on which starter you're on, uh, which island, which starter you're on. Yeah, which starter you're on. If you're on Litten, it evolves into this particular Pokemon. If you're on Poplio, you're, it evolves into this one. No, if it dep if the evolution depends on what island it's on, then I think if that was in relation to the starters, I think we could get something more epic, and that would be something that they would share in common. Depending on the starter that Pokemon evolves on, it takes a different form or a different shape or whatever. So that's something that I am would be more willing to look forward to, is if it was something like that. But a... Pokemon that has some sort of very specific connection with the starters and it, it evolves depending on your starters would just be interesting. But that's just my thoughts of what I've read on the internet. So that's pretty much it. So I don't know if there's going to be information in any revealed. There's a rumor or leak saying that something will probably be revealed on the 21st. I'm not entirely sure if that's accurate. But if anything happens at all in August or whatever, that's something to look forward to in regards to that. And who knows, maybe even Pokemon fan might come up with something interesting in regards to Sun and Moon and something in regards to that. So anyway, thank you for watching. I'm Dustin Benzel, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.